Hello students, welcome to the lecture on petroleum retail business in India and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand the retail scenario of petrol retailing in India. Define the APM implication in the retail trade. Explain the petrol retail marketing in India. Discuss the petroleum retailing product or service. Let's start with the concept of petroleum retail business in India. Indian retail business is the fastest growing business in India. It accounts for over 13% of country's GDP and around 10% of the country's employment. Indian petrol retail sector is fastest growing sector with a contribution of over 13% in country's GDP. The petroleum retailing industry in India faces significant challenges in the deregulated environment coupled with intense competition. A downward pressure is exerted on margins forcing players to adopt new and innovative strategies. India has deregulated the pricing mechanism for retail petroleum in 2002, enabling new players to enter into the market. The entry of new players like Reliance has increased the number of petrol stations from existing 15,000 to more than 30,000 in the past five years. This will also reduce the average throughput per station and total fuel volumes per player. With a market-determined pricing mechanism, prices will have to be lowered, thus reducing margins from fuel products. With limited growth in the number of vehicles, the retail fuel volumes will remain stagnant, thus offering little scope for further improving the overall revenues and margins. Petroleum retaining is a retailing in which differentiation is possible both in service and product. Let's now discuss the retail scenario of petrol retailing in India. International oil markets have evolved significantly and a competitive market has emerged that is setting internationally accepted prices for crude and refined products. In many developing countries, structural reform of petroleum markets has become a critical component of macroeconomic liberalization policies. The role of the government in the petroleum sector is being redefined and markets are being deregulated. Increasingly, the private sector is participating in more competitive petroleum markets. If it is to be successful, such a structural reform must be accompanied by minimal but effective new style regulation. Downstream reform can proceed even further down the supply chain into the retail market and result in competing wholesale distributors and retail outlets. Saudi Arabia has reportedly made a deal with India to supply the South Asian nation with 3 million barrels of additional crude in the month of August. The move comes right after Iran announced that it was suspending crude supply to India because of a payment issue that's been lingering between the two countries for several months now. This issue is yet another example of the Saudi-Iranian rivalry being played out in South Asia. At the heart of the problem between India and Iran is the method of payment. It's not as if India is not willing to pay. It's the form of payment. Iran and India had an arrangement under a clearinghouse system for many years that is no longer applicable because of the sanctions regime against Iran that's become more tighter over the years. Now, Iran is trying to go back to a system that it is more comfortable with, while India uh, is trying to pull Iran into a more transparent direction. And therefore, there's the disconnect and the inability of India to make those payments. Therefore, we have the current situation in which uh, Iran is now trying to apply pressure onto India by saying that uh, we'll suspend crude. Now, the Saudis coming in uh, allows for India to relay a message to Iran that it has other options. At the same time, the Saudis are using this situation fully to their advantage to try and weaken Iran. The, from the Saudi point of view, they can step in and reduce Indian 
dependency on, on Iran that would be a uh, blow to Iranian revenues in the long run. The Saudi-Iranian rivalry, the main arena for that rivalry is the Persian Gulf. Now in the Persian Gulf, the Iranians have the upper hand. So Saudi Arabia is trying to look for ways and means to counter Iranian moves in the Persian Gulf. And one such arena is South Asia. We've already seen the Saudis and the Iranians try to play it out in terms of uh, Pakistan and the wider Afghanistan jihadist arena. If the Saudis are able to steer India into their orbit, then that would be a, a significant gain for Riyadh against Tehran. It is not as if India is completely willing to dump Iran in favor of Saudi Arabia. India likes to keep a very diversified foreign policy portfolio, whether it's security, geopolitics, or economics. And therefore, it, it's too early to say that whether India will completely leave Iran in favor of Saudi Arabia. But as long as there is a problem between Iran and India, the Saudis can take advantage of that. If at some point a new mechanism for payment is agreed upon, then this becomes a, a short-term tool for the Saudis to use against Iran. But until then, uh, the Saudis can be expected to fully exploit the situation. Now moving on to the next topic, we will study the APM implication in the retail trade. The Indian petroleum sector was controlled by the administered pricing mechanism APM, which provided the players with assured returns on capital employed. The APM necessitated that the prices of crude oil products were fixed in a manner so as to assure returns based on net worth capital employed to the exploration and production E and P companies, refiners and marketing companies. A self-balancing system, the APM consisted of a number of oil pool accounts through which products like high-speed diesel, HSD, superior kerosene oil, SKO and liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, were cross-subsidized through higher realizations from other products such as Motor Spirit MS and Aviation Turbine Fuel ATF. The deregulation of the domestic petroleum industry, which was initiated in April 1998, broadly involved the following, providing adjusted import priority prices to refineries, decontrol of all products with the exception of MS, HSD, LPG, SKO and ATF, ATF was subsequently freed from marketing controls with effect from April 1, 2001. Partial rationalization of the duty structure on petroleum products. Providing crude realizations indexed to international prices to the exploration companies. Introduction of the new exploration licensing policy, NELP, in the upstream sector with the intention of inducing capital flows into the sector. The complete decontrol of the sector was proposed from April 2002. In the Union Budget of FY 2002 presented on February 28, 2002, the government finally announced deregulation of the petroleum sector. Key announcement included administered price mechanism APM in the petroleum sector to be dismantled as on April 1, 2002. The pricing of petroleum products to be market determined. Issue of oil bonds to the oil companies concerned to liquidate the oil pool account. Private companies to be permitted in distribution subject to specified guidelines. A petroleum regulatory board to be set up to oversee the sector. Subsidy on domestic LPG and PDS, kerosene to be provided in the budget. The marketing margins of the oil companies are expected to rise following the decontrol of the retail segment. Under the APM, marketing margins of the oil companies used to be determined based on a fixed return on capital employed. However, in a free market, the margins on the decontrolled products are expected to be determined on a replacement cost basis. 
This thinking is substantiated by the fact that the margins on the other decontrolled products like lubricants, industrial fuel and ATF in India had increased significantly post decontrol. International trend also reveals that the marketing margins are much higher and more resilient than the refining margins. While the marketing margins are expected to increase, the bottom line growth may not be huge as the year FY 2002, which has the terminal year of APM results of the oil companies may see some additional income on account of updating in marketing margins for the years FY 2000 and FY 2001 as the marketing margins for these years were not updated. Two additional factors may restrict supernormal growth in marketing margins. The first is expected surplus in petroleum products, particularly auto fuels in the 10th five-year plan lasting FY 2007. The second is that the socio-political reasons may restrict frequent changes in prices. Another immediate positive impact of dismantling the oil pool account would be that the liquidity position of the oil companies should improve as compared to the APM scenario because of improved certainty in cash inflows. On LPG and kerosene, the government proposes to provide a subsidy to the extent of 15% and 33% respectively from the union budget. The liquidity position of the oil companies on account of these two products would be a function of how fast these subsidies are released by the government and the degree to which the oil companies are allowed to change the retail prices on these two sensitive products. The government has also issued oil pool bonds to the oil companies to the extent of INR 90 BN amounting to 80% of the receivable from the oil pool account. While this may improve the certainty of cash flows to the oil companies, in the immediate term they may have to resort to look at other borrowing sources at higher interests for funding their working capital capital expenditure requirements as the payment against receivables gets postponed. Indian Petro Retail Sector Pro APM Era The development of petro retail sector in India has witnessed three distinct phases. Period of dominance of multinational companies. Advent of public sector its growth in coexistence with these transnational companies marketing by the wholly government-owned companies and the fulfillment of socio-economic objectives. At the time of independence, the marketing and retailing of petroleum products was in the hands of private companies like Coltex, Esso and Shell, etc. Later, the government gradually exercised control through public sector companies. The second phase started with actions taken in pursuance of the Industrial Policy Resolution 1956 to promote growth of the vital petroleum sector under the state control. Eventually, IOC was formed in 1959, IBP was acquired in 1970, HPC came into existence in 1974 and BPC in 1976. In the third phase, the experience gained by the government during the second phase and the socio-economic factors encouraged it to go ahead for acquiring the assets of all multinational companies operating in the country. In 1981, the entire oil industry was truly in the government fold. A new era of planned development in consonance with national priorities under the overall direction of the government thus began in the oil sector. From the state of cutthroat competition in marketing and distribution, the PSUs had to quickly adapt to the changed scenario. The assets of oil company in terms of infrastructure facilities were now the national assets. The important area of concern was their optimum utilization. Administrative pricing mechanism in petro retailing up to 1939, there were no controls whatsoever on the pricing of petroleum products. Between 1939 and 1948, the oil companies themselves maintained pool accounts for major products without any intervention by the government. In 1948, an attempt was made to regulate prices through valued stock account procedure. 
Under this procedure, realization of oil companies was restricted to the import parity price of finished goods plus excise duties, local taxes, dealer margins and agreed market margins of each of the refineries. Any excess realization was surrendered to the government. In 1976, the Oil Pricing Committee OPC recommended the discontinuous of the import parity principle on the ground that about 90% of the total demand of POL products was met by indignous production and no major shortfall was anticipated. The OPC therefore suggested that the domestic cost of production should be the determining factor for pricing of petroleum products. Liberalization and marketing sector Keeping its promise of decontrolling pricing and control over marketing structures, the GOI on April 1, 2002 opened up retail marketing of automotive, transportation fuels, petrol, diesel to private and foreign companies with 100% FDI allowed. This marked the end of an era in which only state-owned HPCL, BPCL, IOC and IBP were allowed to undertake retail marketing in automotive fuels. Success factors and outlook. The key success factors for the downstream refiners and marketers are if effective crude procurement, effective crude sourcing and product distribution logistics, Economies of scale, investment in secondary processing facilities, effective project construction management and competitive construction costs. The petrol product retailers who provide the interface between the petroleum sector and the consumers is the most critical link in the petroleum supply chain. The real challenge is therefore to strengthen this link in order to ensure ultimate customer satisfaction. The customer wants more value-added services apart from the basic requirement of purchasing fuel from the petrol pumps. If these could be provided in a uniform manner across urban and rural areas, the face and service of the filling stations could change drastically. Growing competition, changing market perceptions and consumer coupled with the opening of the petroleum sector has meant a sea change in the look and the way retail outlets are managed in the country over the last two years. The petrol stations are fast becoming round the clock outlets with convenience stores, bank ATMs, fast food joints and ancillary services. This is the first time that public and private sector petroleum retail vendors consumer goods companies, banks, merchandisers have converged less than one roof to forge possible business opportunities. Let's now discuss the petrol retail marketing in India. At present, the marketing of petroleum products in India is being done by four major public sector oil companies, namely Indian Oil Corporation Limited, Hindustan Petroleum Corporation Limited, Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited and IBP Corporation Limited. Presently, Petro products are retailed by public sector companies through distributors and more recently through outlets owned by the company. Till a couple of years back, these outlets sold only Petro products along with limited accessories that make up the automobile industry. Internationally, Petro outlets are a very lucrative and an expansive industry that is also used as a convenience store making available generalized goods mainly along the state highways. Since petrol comes store formats are well received, almost all outlets abroad have retail store value add ones at their petrol pumps. The government has approved four new entrants into the petrol marketing sector with Reliance Petroleum, Oil and Natural Gas Corporation, ESSER and Nomali Gar Refineries. These companies will now be allowed to market petroleum products like petrol and diesel through retail outlets. Considering that petrol products are of daily demand with a high consumption rate, some of the public sector companies are resorting to international patents and have initiated convenience stores within their pump outlets as a one-stop retail shop to attract their petrol customer. These stores become a brand name for the company and offer products sourced from other companies for display and sale. 
Some of the brand names launched by companies are HPCL's Club HP, IOC's Convenio and BPCL's In and Out. In times to come, these convenience stores will become brand names for the companies and once the customer becomes conscious of the brand names, they can be taken to shopping malls and sold under the company's brand. But here, it becomes imperative that we look at the way multinationals do business in this format. The range of convenience stores lined up by the three companies offer services that are somewhat similar. For instance, the stores promise communication facilities, internet connections and bill payment facilities and so on. At the moment, revenue from non-petro offerings is negligible, say pump owners. Though the focus of companies has shifted to the non-petro part of the business over the last two years, yet customer service clearly points to the fact that when a customer enters a petrol pump, Filling up the vehicle is top in his mind. Rest is just add-ons. Convenience stores are a drag on the dealer's revenues as he has to invest in the day-to-day -day running of the store while the company only takes care of the initial setting up expenses. Convenience stores are a largely Western phenomenon where petrol pumps make more money from the store rather than the petrol sales. In India, it has been a loss of revenue as petrol pumps are ill-equipped to deal with the practical details of the retailing impulse products or provisions. In growth markets, the major imperative should be to increase profitable revenues and market share growth. The petroleum retailers will need to develop differentiated value propositions to improve revenues and their bottom lines by adopting a customer-focused approach and build strong brand equity. To drive revenues and margins, the retailers will have to attract new customers or increase share of their existing customers' wallet. Know your customer. In developing products and services, the key is to understand your customer. Mobile's customer segmentation in the U.S. Mobile identified the top three segments as being the most profitable and developed its products and services to cater to the target customer's requirements. An exercise to understand the customer segments can go a long way for local petroleum retailers to identify the target segments and developing the appropriate strategy. Sidar has segmented the retail market in Dubai as outlined below. Product and Service Development Once the choice of target segment is identified, products and services need to be tailored to their requirements. The target customer should drive the value proposition for both fuel and non-fuel products and services. Fuel-based proposition In the Western markets, petroleum retailers sell multiple grade fuels based on the obtained ratings with different prices at different stations where the customer can hunt for a bargain. In UAE, where unleaded fuel is the norm, two grades are available, octane 95 and 98. However, the octane 98 petrol accounts for less than 5% of the over 3.3 billion litres consumed. This could be attributed to the 25% premium over the octane 95 product price, which is administered by the government. However, with the large high-end population, an opportunity exists in the market to improve the perception of product superiority and improve the bottom line. In India too, with the introduction of stringent pollution norms coupled with the growth in large cars, the superior product-based opportunity is large. The first mover advantage needs to be captured and capitalized through a mix of customer education and marketing activities. Site security with expected new competition. Site security is the key. In UAE and India, with the expansion of roads network, the existing players book the key sites to beat future competition. However, development of the sites is undertaken once the road becomes operational. The challenge is to use a scientific site selection model to ensure that the site is profitable once it is operational. Site rationalization. 
Even though site security is required, it is critical for managements to monitor performance of their existing and new stations. Loss making stations need to be identified and corrective actions taken to make them profitable. If turnaround is not possible, it is best to close them and divert the resources for other sites or activities. Site upgradation. The regional players have realized that having an at attractive station with friendly staff and offering a range of non-fuel products and services is the key to get customers to drive into their station. Depending on the site space availability, the various players in India and UAE have started renovating their existing sites to offer an international look and feel. The challenge is to prioritize the sites and that need to be upgraded first and which could start offering higher contribution due to the change. Convenience stores. The concept of C stores, though relatively new in India, has got established in the UAE for past three to five years. However, the annual average revenue per square feet in UAE is INR 16,250 compared to INR 27,500 in the US and INR 40,000 in UK. The average value per transaction in UAE is less than 150 compared to INR 300 in the UK. Auto care services. Auto care services complement the fuel services. These include lube change, car wash, feel wheel and tire services, car upholstery cleaning, minor repair services, etc. All of these contribute to the incremental share of the customer's wallet. The car wash and auto care average around 7% and 4% of the total revenues for fuel retailers in Japan and US. In the UAE, it is between 1% to 2%. Also, the lube to fuel volume ratio in UAE is 0.26% compared to 1% internationally. However, in the UAE, it is observed that where these services are available, their utilization is high. Therefore, they should be available at more number of locations. Customer loyalty programs. We have been discussing the subject of acquiring, retaining customers and understanding their requirements. Customer loyalty programs enable organizations worldwide to achieve these goals. The loyalty program ensures that the customer limits the use of competitors' facilities due to various incentives which are offered to him. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learnt in this lecture. Indian petroleum retail sector is fastest growing sector with a contribution of over 13% in country's GDP. International oil markets have evolved significantly and a competitive market has emerged that is setting internationally accepted prices for crude and refined products. Retail industry in India is expected to rise 25% yearly being driven by strong income growth, changing lifestyles and favorable demographic patterns. The marketing of petroleum products in India is being done by four major public sector oil companies namely Indian Oil Corporation Limited, Hindustan Petroleum Corporation Limited, Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited and IBP Corporation Limited. The Indian petroleum sector was controlled by the administered pricing mechanism APM which provided the players with assured returns on capital employed.